Well, uh, hello and how are you? Hey, friends. Welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri, on Friday, December 22nd, 2017, making this V-blog number 2,307, which also means I've been doing this for six years and 55 days. Now, I got some happy birthday shout-outs going out today because it is December 22nd, meaning that uh, Carol Donovan, Megan Nicole Holsetter, and uh, Tracy Reed all have birthdays today. And so, without further ado, here is a birthday song for the three of you. Hey, I heard it's your birthday today, so happy birthday, I must say. You know, Carol and Megan and uh, Tracy, there's a... One more year gone away, so a happy birthday to you today. I said, hey, I heard it's your birthday today, so happy birthday, I must say. You know there's one more year gone away, so happy birthday to you today, and many more. Ya cha 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 Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Hey, let's just jump right on into our daily bread. First off, let's cleanse our soul, get a little closer to God, because this time of year is when we need to be closest to Him at all. Actually, we should be close to God out every day of our lives, but this time of year, it seems like more and more people find themselves in not remembering the whole spirit of Christmas, which is the birth of Jesus Christ. Forgive me, Father God, for I have sinned. Please cleanse my soul. And relieve me of the guilt and the penalties. I will stop doing evil and I will start doing good. And I believe in my heart that God has risen Jesus up from the dead. And that he now sits at the right hand side of God in heaven up above. Now I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And so therefore I know that I am saved in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And they all said, Amen. All right, today's devotion from Our Daily Bread is called Silent Night of the Soul. Now, I won't be able to read the Daily Bread due to the fact it's a trademark, but if you would like to listen to someone read it for you, you can always go to otb.org and go to the Daily Devotion. Subscribe to them, make a little donation to them, so that they can help spread the gospel all around the world. Push the little round button with the arrow in it, and they will read it for you because well that's what they do now of course there's no copyright on the Bible that says that I can't read that to you and so I am going to read 2nd Corinthians 5 14 through 21 and if you're keeping up with your Bible in the year which I really hope that you are you'll be reading Micah 6 through 7 and Revelation 13 Okay, without further ado, here is Second Corinthians 5, 5, 14 through 21. Alrighty then. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we know we now, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away, and behold, new things have can't come. Now, all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not continuing, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the world reconciliation of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, 
as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And there you have it, Second Corinthians five fourteen through twenty one. Alrighty, um, let's see. I think I'm going to sing a song. Uh, because of the uh, devotion, was called Silent Night of Holy. So here we go. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, who so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace, silent night, holy night, oh, all is bright round yon virgin mother and child holy infant so tender and mild sleep in heaven be peace sleep in Heavenly peace. Now I've got to sing one of my own songs today because, well, my um, daytime caregiver, she kind of, uh, I had her warm me something up in the crock pot, which was some ham. And, well, she said that it was pretty good. It was a uh, ham that my nighttime caregiver made and she made it by throwing a cup and a half of uh, brown sugar in the bottom of the crock pot threw the ham in set a pour, poured another cup and a half of brown sugar on top of the uh, crock pot and turned it on to cook and some six to eight hours later it was good so anyway uh that's the song i'm gonna sing it's a crock pot christmas Go to sleep. Okay, here we go. Crockpot Christmas. Which, you know. I wrote this in myself, so here we go. Well, it's a crockpot Christmas where the food's all delicious. It's a brand new tradition for our family. Now, yes, it's a crockpot Christmas where the food's all delicious. And this is how it works. Well, there comes a time in every young girl's life when she has to take over the family tradition of preparing the Christmas dinner. Well, this year was my little girl's turn, so she prepared all of the food at home and decided the best way to transport that food would be in crock pots. Well, it's a crock pot Christmas where the food's all delicious. It's a brand new tradition for our family. Now, yes, it's a crock pot Christmas where the food's all delicious, all delicious, and this here is how it works. Well, she set up the table and set out six different crock pots, and when she pulled the lids off, well, the aroma of all that different food made you hungry right there on the spot. Well, it's crock-pot Christmas, the uh, food's all delicious, it's a brand new tradition in our family. Yes, a crock-pot Christmas, where the food's all delicious, and this here's how it works. Well, 
you grab yourself a star foam tray and from the first crock pot you get a spoonful of green bean casserole and then comes the second crock pot which is mashed potatoes and skins and all and in the third crock pot you have the sweet potatoes you know the kind with the marshmallows on top well the fourth crock pot well it's a surprise broccoli cauliflower casserole right before your eyes and then comes the fifth crock pot which is the asparagus and I must say confess it pleased all of us and in the sixth and final crock pot to around the table off is a holiday ham so tender and soft well it's a crock pot Christmas where the food's so delicious it's a brand new tradition in our family I said it's a crock pot Christmas where the food's so delicious it's a brand new tradition in our family yeah it's a crock pot Christmas where the food's so delicious it's just a there you go. Hey, that there was Crock-Pot Christmas. I wrote that, and, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, now you know what I think. I'm going to read um, a short story by Hans Christian Andersen. It's called The Last Dream of Old Oak. It's an interesting story for all ages, though not as well known as The Little Match Girl or any other Christmas stories, and, well, it's one of our favorite fairy tales. It's all about a big oak tree having a conversation with a uh, beetle, I think. Oak beetle? I think, I think. Between an old oak and a mayfly. That's what it is. It's between an old oak and a mayfly. So, here we go. In the forest, high up on the st steep shore, and not far from the open sea coast, stood a very old oak tree. It was just 365 years old, but that long time was to the tree as the same number of days might be to us. We wake by day and sleep by night, and when we have our dreams, well, it's different with the trees. It is obliged to keep awake th though three s through th three seasons of the year, and does not get any sleep till winter comes. Well, winter is the time for rest, and night after the long day of spring, summer, and autumn. On many a warm summer, the ephorium aura of the flies that exist for only a day had fluttered about the oak tree, enjoyed life, and felt happy. And if for a moment one of the tiny creatures rested on one side of his large fresh leaves, the tree would always say, Poor little creature, your whole life consists of only one, of only a single day. How very short it must be. Quiet melancholy. Melancholy? What do you mean? The little creature would always reply. Everything around me is so wonderfully bright and warm and beautiful, and it makes me jo joyous but only for one day, and then it's all over. Over, replied the fly. What is the meaning of all over? Are you all over too? No, I shall live like, likely live for thousands of days, and my day is whole, is whole seasons long. Indeed, it is so long that you could never reckon on it out. You could never reckon it out. No, then I don't understand you. You may have thousands of my days, but I have thousands of moments in which I can be merry and happy. Does all the beauty of the world cease when you die? No, replied the tree. It will certainly last much longer. 
infinitely longer than, than I, I can even think of. Well then, said the little fly, we have the same time to live, only we reckon differently. And the little creature danced and floated, floated in the air, rejoicing in her delicate wings of gauze and velvet, rejoicing in the balmy breeze, laden with the fragrance of clover fields and wild roses, elder blossoms and honeysuckle from the garden hedges, wild thyme, primrose, and mint, and the scent of all of these was so strong that the perfume almost intoxicated the little fly. The long and beautiful day had been so full of joy and sweet delights that when the sun sank low it felt tired of all its happiness and enjoyment. Its wings could s sustain it no longer, and gently and slowly it glided down upon the soft waving blades of grass, nodded its little head as well as it could nod, and slept peacefully and sweetly. The fly was dead. Poor little ephemeral said, <laughs> "Ain't right." Uh, poor little ephemeral said, "The oak, what a terribly short life!" And so, on every summer day, the dance was repeated, the same questions asked, and the same answers given. The same thing was continued through many generations of ephemeral, ephemer, ephemera. All of them felt quietly, equally merry, and equally happy. The oak remained awake through the morning of the spring, and noon of the summer, and the evening of autumn. Its time of rest, its night, drew nigh. Winter was coming. Already the storm was singing, Good night, good night. Here fell a leaf, and there fell a leaf. We will rock you, a lull you, and lull you. Go to sleep, go to sleep. We will sing you to sleep, and shake you to sleep, and it will do you, your old twigs. Good and they will even crackle with pleasure. Sleep sweetly, sweet, sweetly. Sleep sweetly, sleep sweetly. It is your 365th night, correctly speaking. And you are but a youngster in the world. Sleep sweetly. The clouds will drop snow upon you, which will be quite, quite a cover lid, warm and sheltering, to your feet. Sweet sleep to you and pleasant dreams. And there stood the oak, stripped of all its leaves, left to rest during the whole of the long winter, and to dream many dreams of events that had happened in its life. As it, as in the dreams of men, the great tree had once been small indeed, in its cradle it had been an acorn, according to human copulation. It was now in the fourth century of its existence. It was the largest and best tree in the forest. Its summit towered above all the other trees, and could be seen far out at sea, so that it ser served as a landmark to the sailors. It had no idea how many eyes looked eagerly for it in its topmost branches. The wood, paint, wood pigeon built their nests, nests, and the cuckoo carried, cried out his usual vocal performance, and his well-known notes echoed amid the brows, and in autumn, when the leaves looked like beaten copper pallet, plat, 
copper plates, the birds of passage would come and rest upon the branches before taking their flight across the sea. But now it was winter, and the trees stood leafless, so that every one could see how crooked and bent were the branches that sprang forth from the trunk. Crows and rocks, crows and rooks, came by turns and sat on them, and talked of the bird, of the hard times which were beginning, and how difficult it was in winter to obtain food. It was just about Holy Christmas time that the tree dreamed a dream. The tree had doubtless a kind of feeling that the festive time had arrived, and in his dream fancied the hard, fancied that he heard the bells ringing from the churches around, and yet it seemed to him to be a beautiful summer's day, mild and warm. He mighty, his mighty summit was crowned with spreading fresh green foliage. The sunbeams played among the leaves and branches, and the air was full of fragrance from herb and blossoms. Painted blue butterflies chased each other. The summer flies danced around him as if the world had been created merely for them to dance and be merry in. All that had happened to that the tree during every year of his life seemed to be passing before him, as in a festive procession. He saw the knights of the olden times and noble ladies riding by their through the woods of their gallant steeds on their gallant steeds, with plumes waving in their hats, and falcons on their wrists. The hunting horn sounded, the dogs barked, and he saw hostile warriors in colored dresses and glittering armor, with spears and halberd, pitching their tents and anon striking them. The watch fires again blazed. The men sang and slept under the hospitable shelter of the tree. He saw lovers meet in quiet happiness near him in the moonshine, and carved their initials on their, of their names in the grayish-green bark on his trunk. Once, but long ago, long years had, on his trunk once, but long years had intervened since then. Guitars and Aeolian harps had been hung on his brows, by merry travelers. Now they seemed to hang there again, and he could hear their marvelous tones. The wood pigeons cooed as if to explain the feeling of the tree, and the cuckoo called out to tell him how many summer days had he had yet to live. Then it seemed as if new life was thrilling through though every fiber of root and stem and leaf rising even to the highest branches. The tree felt itself stretching and spreading out, while through the root beneath the earth ran the warm vigor of life as he grew higher and still higher. With increased strength, his topmost brows became broader and fuller, and in pop proportion to his growth. So was his self-satisfaction increased, and with it arose a joyous long, longing to grow higher and higher, to reach even the warm, bright sun itself. Satisfaction increased, in which it arose a jo joyously long to grow higher and higher, to reach even up oh, already had his topmost branches pierced the clouds which floated beneath them like troops of birds of passage, or 
large white swans. Every leaf seemed gifted with sight, as if possessed as if as if it possessed eyes to see. The stars became visible in broad daylight, large and sparkling like clear and gentle eyes. They re recall to the memory as well known look in the eyes of the child, or in these eyes of lovers who had once met beneath the branches of the old oak. These were wonderful and happy moments for the old tree, full of peace and joy, and yet amidst all it, this happiness the tree felt a yearning, long desire that all the other trees, bushes, herbs, and flowers beneath him might be able to also to rise higher, as he had done and to see all this splendor and experience the same happiness the grand majestic oak could not be quite happy in the midst of his enjoyment while all of the rest while all of the rest both great and small were not with him and in this feeling of yearning trembled my gosh this thing is forever if you would like to read the final parts of this play this poem, uh, story, then I suggest that you go to 100. AmericanLiterature.com. That's what you need to do. Just go to AmericanLiterature.com and poke on an author or Christmas stories, and then that way you can read all the stories you want to read. This one was called the. Uh, the oak, the old oak, I think, the last dream of old oak, that's what it was called, if you would like to read the rest of it, then be uh, so blessed and go for it, anyway, what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump off of here and go on and see what else I can do for today, so, Without further ado, here's one more song for you. Hey, well, goodbye, my friends, it's time to go. I said goodbye, my friends, it's the time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must go. Goodbye, my friends, goodbye. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello and how are you. And thanks for tuning in to the Shen Show. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So be blessed in Jesus' name, and come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, I'll be here, and I hope you are, too. Sorry I couldn't read any more, but, boy, my eyes were just shot.